Reef Tank Essentials, what do you actually need? We all know about the Reef Tank Essentials to get into the hobby, the basics, the necessities, but nobody's really talking about the little knickknacks that make your life way easier and are, in my opinion, still Reef Tank Essentials. For instance, a nice little chuck it bucket. I've never called it that before, but I just decided right now that that's a pretty good name for it because I put anything and everything in this bucket. My mom wasn't very happy when I stole one of her Tupperwares, but I have had this since I got the tank set up and it pretty much is my workhorse of a bucket. So not only do I stock all of this random stuff in here, right? Boom, you just have it all in there and then it could just go right there. That's the major use of it. When I'm gonna clean my filters, I put it right here and boom, filters go right here. Don't have to make a mess all over the place. Whenever I'm selling coral, I will put all of the frags in this bucket and just take this bucket. Helps me not make a mess in my car, as well as just carry everything at once. Also, whenever I'm dipping multiple corals, I will use that bucket if they all came from the same tank to do a bigger dip at once and not spend all day dipping corals before putting them in the tank. The chuck it bucket should be on everybody's reef tank essentials list. Which brings us to our next culprit. Long, long tweezer tongs. I've been rhyming like Dr. Seuss lately. I'm not entirely sure why, but I'm kind of digging it. These things are crucial for getting stuff and moving it around your tank. I started off with different ones and then I've moved to these. They're pretty good. Uh, I'm sure there's way better ones out there, but these work for me for what I use them for. You see that piece of green Monty that just fell down there? Watch, we're gonna use our little tweezers to get it out. Most of the time, you don't even have to get your hand wet. In this case, I'm going to, but Boom. Oh, this is a this is a big piece here. Uh-oh. Okay. So that was a terrible example cuz this is like a piece that doesn't even fit in here and now we're stuck. I think this is one of those do as I say, not as I do kind of situations, but watch, we'll get it out. Oh, it fell down here. Look. Boom. Got it. Noise. A long pair of Tweezer, I don't know what you want to call them, but they come in handy. Pick up a pair. Moving on to the next reef tank essential, gloves. Gloves are not only good to protect you from whatever might be toxic and whatnot, but they are also helpful when you don't want to get your hands wet. Maybe it's only me, I don't know, but I hate to get my hands wet sometimes and I just want to, I, there's something that I have to take care of in the tank and I just don't want to do it or don't want to get my hands wet. Gloves. I just got these gloves recently and let me tell you, they are a freaking game changer. Look up. Look at this. Hold on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could literally stick my entire hand into this tank and still not get my hand wet. The fingers are smaller, so they're a little bit easier to maneuver. This with the tweezers is an awesome combination. But pretty much, it just, they're thicker, like, <sighs> gloves, homies, gloves. Reef tank essentials, baby. Hey, and don't forget, this month we're gonna be giving away one of these three gallon nano tanks to one of you guys. Entering the giveaway is free and easy. All you have to do is like this video, subscribe to this channel, and comment down below. The giveaway entry window will close January 31st and the winner will be announced on February 3rd. Now back to your scheduled program. This is the last week, so don't forget to enter. Next is different kinds of food. Pellets, let me reach on back here. I got real, real stinky easy mastic. I have reefroids, seaweeds, and we have frozen mysis. The reason I feel that it is essential to have different types of food, not only one if for your fish and corals to get a variety, you know? Like, how would you feel if you were eating the same exact thing every single day for the rest of your life? Number one. Number two is for ease and to make your life easier. Sometimes with the seaweed, you gotta stick your hand in the tank. Now, remember, Tangs, I actually, I don't know if it's all tangs. The tangs that I have need seaweed. We gotta make sure that we have that to keep them with their good nutrition, you know? We, we don't wanna go too many days without giving them the uh, nori, so I usually will do nori like every other day or every third day at least, but also my tangs eat everything else, so I don't know if that's the case for all the fish. I don't know about all fish, I just know about my fish. I mean my fish specifically, not my species of fish, just to be clear. You know, for easy days, I'll throw in some pellets and then I'll throw in some mysis to give them a little spice. The easy mastic thing is nice if you wanna have people watch the fish feed because it lasts a really long time when you stick it on the glass. Reminder, it does smell really, really bad when you open the container, so just, you know, plug your nose or something. All of my fish eat everything. They are little fatties and they love it. Look at them, just going crazy right now. Even this guy comes out. Scully is still still in recovery mode. We're looking good. We're still doing every other day feedings. 
and he seems to be reacting well with the uh, lights off technique, so yay for that. This will lead us to our next refake essential, which is a pipette. This thing is clutch. Not only do I use it for coral feeding, but I also use it to fill up and bring it to my other tanks to feed those fish. Let's see if anybody comes out. Come on, guys. There he is. Look at him. Woo! That fish is so dope. Look at him. Oh my god, he just took down a humongous piece. Heck yeah. He's munching away too. Next is a solid glass cleaner, or if you have acrylic, obviously don't use this, but you know, a, a solid something to clean your glass because it makes a humongous difference. Look at my corals. You cannot see nothing, 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 nothing. Everything looks like trash. And then look at the difference. It's, it's just, it's literally a miracle. So why do I say a glass cleaner? And like, obviously you need to clean your glass. Yes, but for me personally, a scraper like this, like a, a, a glass cleaner, works better than the like the magnets. There are some good magnets, and I know a lot of people use magnets all the time, and I've never had an issue. For me personally, I just haven't had good luck, and I feel like I scratch my glass, and it just it just freaks me out. So I don't personally use it. I also feel like I gotta like rub really hard, and sometimes if the algae or the you know coralline or whatever is on there too strong. I can't get it off with that magnet. However, with the razor, I can get it off. So that's why it's on my essentials list. Maybe don't add it to yours, but it's on mine. Before, scrape, 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 and after. Look at this. You could see everything crystal clear without any uh, fogging up. Cleaning the glass makes all the difference in a tank looking awesome. So the next thing costs a little bit more money than the reef tank essentials that I've been listing so far. However, I do think it is detrimental, I hope I used that word correctly, to, uh, you know, your, your sanity in reefing, in, in my personal opinion. Also, if you're keeping like a coral tank and not just like a fish tank, because then you don't really necessarily need to dose. But if you are dosing alkalinity, calcium, I don't know, whatever else you might dose, a doser is essential. It does not need to be a crazy expensive doser. I believe my entire doser setup was well under $150. Don't quote me on that, but I did do videos on this setup, and I'm pretty sure it was way under that. So I just have a cheap three-pump J-O-B doser. You know what? Let me look up how much this cost. $60 for a three-pump doser. So yeah, then this was well under a hundred dollars obviously not including the uh actual supplements but you get the doser and then i did the voss diy setup with the plumbing and stuff so you're probably looking around a hundred bucks to set up a doser but let me tell you guys the stability that i get from having my supplements on a doser number one number two is literally my brain power and my time. Time is money in case you didn't know this yet. And having to stop by your tank and dose every single day is just time consuming. Is it a lot of time? No, it's not, but it count, it adds up and then it's just gonna like build on the stuff like, oh, I got a dose now. So yeah, just kind of setting it, forgetting it and just checking to make sure your bottles are filled every once in a while. I feel like is a reef tank essential. A hundred bucks in the grand scheme of things, <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. No, I take it back. Like reefing doesn't have to be that expensive. It, unless you want it to be, and then yeah, it could be super expensive, but all right, I, I understand I'm rambling now, but basically just get some sort of doser. It doesn't have to be a top of the line doser. Highly recommend. Next reef take essential is in this drawer. Pair of orange sunglasses. Skelly Fest 2023 dates dropping soon. Also, don't forget to shop the merch shop later.com. Link will be in the description. Use the code YouTube10 for 10% off your order. So the shades, they are super important, not in terms of like, your reef tank can't go without it, but in terms of getting the best looks out of your tank and your corals, especially when you're showing the tank to guests. Look at the tank now, and then look at it. Th this isn't a great example because it just takes out all the blues and I don't really have blues. Right I mean, it still does It still does a good job, you know, and you're seeing it like natural, natural looking colors before glasses, after glasses. But now here's where the real magic happens. Let's see if this works because, ooh, it's connected. You know, it's hit or miss with whether this is gonna work or not. So we are going to put the lights in uh, blues, right? Boom, looks terrible, looks awful. What is this? This is coral, this is what it looks like. Well, let me tell you guys. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that most of you guys already know about the orange sunglasses, but just in case for those of you guys that don't, this is the secret to getting your corals to pop and look amazing in in whatever, if you're taking phone videos, if you're, I don't know what you're doing, but this is the, this is the trick. Before, 
and after. After, before, before, and after. I feel like an eye doctor. Before, and after. If you are wanting to see your corals pop, you guys gotta pick up some orange sunglasses. Granted, I have a lot of ambient light going on right now, and my lights just turned on, so nothing is looking like super great. However, this is the trick, and uh, this is how all those coral pictures and whatnot are taken. Most likely, they have an orange filter on their camera, so that way they can really get those colors to pop. Top down is always a good look. Oof, my favorite view of the tank. Looking real, real nice. This side right here is my favorite, but we're working on filling in the rest of the tank so that way the whole thing is my favorite. Yeah, so orange sunglasses, a must. Those are some of my reef tank essentials. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Later. Yeah.